Hello, everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good a good whatever. Um, Chaotics. How are we? I hope we're doing good today. Here are the minutes for you. In case you missed that, it'd be great if you want to add your name to the list of the other chaotics that are joining our meeting. I got to get used to saying that. I'm I'm so in like like chaotic neutral, chaotic good. I guess we can all decide which category we fit in individually. Um, chaotic, evil, good, or neutral. Anyway, sorry, I digress. Um, let me share. All right. Let me also open this chat window over here so I don't miss something. Great. <clears throat> Let's get started. Okay, so number one, it's not a new item, but it is, of course, the most important item on our agenda which is that the Bengals are still, we're still cheering them, right? Everyone's still doing their their. They're Bengals still in it. Yep. Awesome, yes. <laughs> For those who don't know, the Bengals, my Cincinnati Bengals professional American NFL football team is playing, they're playing in the Super Bowl this Sunday. So I will shut up about this eventually, but not today, so sorry. Um, you have a few more days with which to put up with my obnoxiousness on the Bengals, but it's just very exciting because it just hasn't happened in like 30 years. So it's very- Unless it's very they win, then we have next week too. Well, yeah, that's a good point. I'm, I'm not really <laughs> like, I don't even care, honestly, if they don't win. It's, it's really over at that point. It. That's right. We made it. That's all that matters to me personally. <laughs> However, if we do win, then I might be a little more obnoxious next week. I'm so sorry. Um, anyway, sorry. Yes. So go Bengals. <clears throat> Moving on to number two. Um, so this was, I don't think Ruth is on the call yet. Do you see Ruth, anybody? No worries yep. if not. I yeah, literally just connected. joined. She's connected. Uh, such good she timing. Just... She and I got the vibes today. Um, Ruth, I was just getting ready to talk about She Code Africa. So I don't know if you want to jump in and give some context around this. Not to put you on the spot right as you join. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so she called Africa first. Is like, it's a, um, it's an NGO, right? That um, you know, empowers women in Africa, like provide opportunities for women to learn uh, technology. Um, you know, provide resources as well, mentorship. So they have like a whole lot of programs. And personally, I've benefited, you know, starting up with tech, I've benefited a lot from those programs and all that. So last year, they launched a program, something similar to GSOC, um, called Contributon. Um, so I'm going to get a link to that very soon. Contributon. So it's, yeah, exactly. That's the spelling. Um, so it's like a month long uh, contribution to open source um, attached to a project and um, the the participants get um, $500 stipend. So how this works is, so they are like different. So she got Africa has like, they reach out, they have sponsors who sponsor this event, right? And then there's the, there are um, organizations or projects that participate as mentoring organizations and um, yeah, that, those are like two categories, sponsoring organization, you know, mentoring organization, which is like, you know, participate as a project. So um, usually um, the ladies that it's just for um, female, um, female. So the ladies that apply to um, participate in this program, right? They are attached to like different, different projects. Right, the first stage is mentoring organizations apply to be part of the program, right? And they have their projects, you know, their mentors that are going to be in charge of that project. So it's just similar um, thing to GSOC. And um, these ladies work on the project for one month. It's one month period. So um, yeah, after one month, after the end of one month, they have like a, a call that you know rounds up um, a collaborative call kind of where all the projects you know they pick a time and then like a graduating kind of thing. So yeah, and then she called Africa 
pays the participants, the stipends at the end of, you know, that period, they evaluate their contributions and all that stuff. So um, I participated as, so there's a project I contribute, another project, open source project I contribute to, um, yeah, so last year when they launched the program, I participated as um, the organizer from that project end. So uh, I was able to organize um, projects in the community that you know that needs contribution that could work within the period of one month so i was able to organize some projects and we had like six participants from Chicago africa that were able to contribute both documentation um, code um, both documentation and code so i i drew up like projects that needed help within the community and we had six participants and you know six mentors as well um i participated as both a mentor and over um and saw through like the whole process from the open source community so um i talked to elizabeth that was last week um it would be great if um chaos would participate and she could have guys going to send um, an official email coming weeks um but it would be something great that we can participate in as a mentoring organization yeah so uh, i'm happy to answer any questions so thanks ruth this is matt hi yeah um hey do we so for the stipend would chaos provide it or is that provided by a different set of sponsors Either yeah, the, the, the stipends is provided by the sponsors, right? So there are sponsors that, you know, participate in the program, right? So um, she called Africa on their end, collects the funds and dispense to the participants. So not the mentoring organization provides okay. the stipends, but she called Africa through the sponsors. Gotcha. Thank you. Um, I mean, listening to your talk, I don't see any reason at all why we shouldn't participate in this. Um, I guess maybe that there would just be a like, few logistical things that we'd want to sort out. One is I went to that link that you provided and it, I didn't follow through on it. But um, like if we provide our projects, candidate projects through that survey process, or if, which I think is similar to like what Outreachy does, or if we were apply, uh, or if we provide our candidate projects like in our own community GitHub repository, the way we do for Google Summer of Code, either is fine. It's just a logistics question. Um, so uh, any, any of them, sorry, were you about to say something? Oh, sorry, Ruth. That's a great initiative. I'm just wondering about the scope of your diversity. How did you uh, come up with the project given we know Africa it's not just a country but a continent how representative are you and how diverse that could be something yeah. we should think about um, yeah thank you for the question so um I'm going to get um the particular um the particular um details but last year the program had participation from about three countries yeah, I think that's three countries in Africa. So Nigeria, I'm going to get the exact countries, but it had like three countries um, from Africa that participated in the first cohort. I don't know if that answered your question, um, Armstrong. And we are also trying to, you know, spread the word out as well because she called Africa is more like it's not just um, it's not just an organization in Nigeria, although uh, the founder is in Nigerian, but it's like, you know, for Africa as a whole. So um, mm -hmm. plans like spread the word more so we get more applicants from other countries. Last the last um, the last um, cohort was from three the participants were from like three countries. Okay. Yeah, because to me it's a great uh, project. It's something that really looks good 
from what you've described and I really wish we should really spread the word across to get a rich set of diverse people even though you are focused with uh, girls which is another uh, uh, which is uh, a plus it it really needs to touch as much as uh, as much people as possible thank you very much for that great thanks yeah you're welcome also okay so for this um thank you ruth you're awesome um I think next steps is just to kind of wait for them. They're supposed to, to be emailing, emailing us some more specifics on how we get involved, but it sounds like it's definitely something that we want to move forward with unless something else comes up. So um, exciting. I'm very excited about that. Thank you so much for bringing that to us, Ruth. It's awesome. Any other questions for Ruth? I guess this is just a comment for people like Matt and others. Like, I don't know if we already had ideas for for Google Summer of Code, but I assume we can make submission for the same project idea for for both. Yeah. And you know, like I mean, we'll deal with it if it gets accepted by both. But yeah, I don't think we need to create separate ones for for right, GSOC right. versus isn't, yeah. Isn't GSOC so. a little shorter this year too? I recall the time, like the mentoring time anyway. I think they're doing it both ways, short and long okay. projects. Okay. Okay. So maybe this might align with maybe some of the sort of shorter projects because if it's yeah. just a month. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, Ruth, go ahead. Yeah. I think I think one thing that might conflict with GSOC because since GSOC is a three month period, um, and you know, this is one month period. I think that might have, um, you know, some conflict because the timing for uh, the idea is the project can be done in a month, right? Um, because that's like the court period. For, for some of the participants, they stay longer, right? Even after contribution, even after the program ends. Yeah, some participants still continue contributing to the um, organization. So, yeah, I just want to chip in that. Perfect. Totally agree. Uh, okay, so we're going to move along. Um, thanks again, Ruth, for bringing that up. And the next one is, um, I just wanted to, because it's been a while since we did our working group updates, we used to do them all on one day of our weekly meeting here. Um, and then we decided the end of last year to break those up and just do like one update a, a week. So we're going to kick that off again. Um, so if there's somebody from the DEI working group who wants to provide an update on what the group's up to next week here at this weekly community meeting, that would be fantastic. I don't know if I want to like have someone commit right now, but if you're in the DEI working group, maybe. Well, I mean, I can commit, but. All right. <laughs> so. I love to voluntold. Yay. Matt D no is the person. Awesome. Thanks, Matt. Um, okay. Uh, next on our uh, agenda is this um, place for internal chaos project. So, um, uh, the DEI badging kind of kicked this off. And then as Ruth and I were speaking earlier today, this we're, there's a lot of like knowledge around our newcomer um, initiatives that we're working on. Um, but these also, these, this, these pieces of knowledge also contain some personally identifiable, identifiable information or PII, which means we wanna keep it kind of private if we can, things like email addresses. Um, and we don't want that information to get lost. Um, so in essence, like when the DEI badging, um, we're kind of doing some shifting of transitioning of leadership there. And um, the list of reviewers, for instance, here's all the reviewers, here's our email addresses. Like, where does that document live? And we wanna make sure that there isn't just like one person that has that information. So um, we were, Ruth and I were thinking like, maybe there should be a private repo, um, just an idea, private repo on our GitHub chaos account organization that um, we could put some of these docs that are a little bit more sensitive that we don't wanna have public per se, but we do want like maybe the core um, chaos group to, to be, have access to like someone else besides me 
<laughs> that has this information. Um, not that I'm going anywhere, but you know, things happen and it would be great if like more than one person had this information. So what do, what do we think about that? So what are the, do the, the docs that are like help with like record keeping for some of the initiatives, is that right? Yeah, so it'd be like, <clears throat> for instance, we ask, um, here's another example, we ask newcomers to fill out a form um, when they join our community. Well, that form takes things like their GitHub username and their email address and like how they're, how much they know about chaos and things like that. Like it's kind of sensitive information that we don't wanna put out there, but I want a link to that doc somewhere so that someone can access it besides me. So it would be like a, a like an internal knowledge base of like, here's where stuff is. Yeah, that, like, that makes sense to me. And I just put, so there would just be like a private repo within the chaos org that would just be like, at the moment, like you and Ruth, for example. Yeah, yeah, that would, you know, cause we're, we are sharing these docs back and forth and collaborating on, um, on different mm -hmm. ideas, but we'd, you know, I don't, like not everybody needs to see that. I see some comments in the chat about um, a shared drive on Google that could also work. Um, because we have that already in the chaos, the chaos project has its own Gmail account. So we could do that too. What do we think? Anybody else have thoughts on that? I think we've already used uh, private Google Docs. So I think, I think that's kind of common practice right now for, for some of those things. Okay, perfect. Uh, so, so maybe we've already kind of voted. Okay. <laughs> Three Fair years. Uh, Justin, did you have a comment? Yeah, so one thing is um, there's this nice feature. I had access when I was at my university. I'm not sure what kind of account Chaos has with Google, if there's a, like a Google like business account there, but you can create these shared drives, which is like, the times I'd use them as a really great way, especially if you're working across a wide organization to organize all the things and people can have different access and rights. Um, this is, I think, a layer on top of Google Docs that can be really helpful, but I'm not sure. You probably have to play around and see if you can create that from the Chaos Gmail account, depending how it's set up. Um, if it's possible, I think that would be a really cool approach just to add a little more organization around the, <laughs> Because I've gotten lost trying to find Google Docs, and I get I have I, I've, I've created my own folder and bookmarks of all these chaos docs. But um, it would be nice to have that centrally managed instead of it having to you know have the right link and make sure you have the right folder saved and so on. Yeah, totally agree. And the only the only reason I was thinking of a GitHub repo is that we could kind of create our own like wiki or like internal handbook. Um, to, to kind of explain like, okay, for instance, here's the DEI badging stuff. Here's where the list of current reviewers are. Here's how many reviews they've done and who's up next. Here's the way that this bot, who owns the bot and this is where it's located. And just like all of that, those pieces. So would we, in our shared drive, would we, there be like almost like a readme file or like, how would we, like, how would we indicate like start here? Here's where all of the links are. Yeah, you could you could have like a readme Google Doc. It wouldn't quite be the same effect. Maybe just right. trying to make any other files are organized within subfolders by working group or by other another way of organizing. Um, but you know, kind of thinking about it, a GitHub wiki could also work nicely and tie in with some of our other workflows. So I, I could go either way on it, I guess. I would think about where um, what format all of these docs are in now. When, when you're thinking about whether to use a shared drive or, or Google, because if a lot of it's coming from Google Forms, then you might be better off leaving it in, in Google and creating a shared drive. We use a shared drive. Um, we use it internally here at VMware. We also have one that we use for Open UK for like all of the confidential board meeting stuff. And it works, it works pretty well for things like that. Um, on the other hand, we have um, um, in the to-do group, we have a private, private repository where we manage things like um, member lists, for example. So, you know, I'm, I'm in projects that kind of do it both ways, but I think, I would, I would think hard about what, exactly what content you're going to put there and what the best fit for that type of content would be. 
I would uh, I would like to also add that the uh, the the content we we do want that to be private, but the fact that the content exists, we should have some transparency around that. Uh, so I think that's one of the reasons that the I think Google Docs also kind of makes sense to me because we could actually have the links to those private documents. Uh, displayed in a transparent fashion, and then if someone tries to access them, they have to basically request request access. So that that also kind of uh, creates the process by which we would uh, allow people access to those documents. Right. I see a couple of comments in chat about um, wikis and the GitHub wikis. Can we create a private repo to then create a wiki? That's kind of Melba what I was, what my original thought was. Like if we just had a private repo that, you know, some of the chaos admins and maintainers had access to, um, that would kind of just be like almost an internal community handbook for things of like how does stuff work? Like if if I, you know, I don't know, ran away tomorrow, <laughs> I won't say got hit by a bus, but if I ran away, um, like you know, a lot of this stuff is in my head and, and that's kind of what we were fi finding out with um, Matt and the DEI badging initiative. Like a lot of that stuff was in his head, which was fine because he was the one working on it. But, you know, um, to pass that information along, it's almost like we needed a, a handbook, you know? If I won the lottery and retired on a beach, yes, Don, thank you. That's exactly where my head was. That's exactly what I would do. And, and you know, this isn't something we have to solve right now. Um, just want to put that out there of like, Maybe it's something for the common working group or the operations team to, to help sort out as well. I don't know. So, okay. Um, any other final comments? Because we do have other stuff to talk about. Okay, well, we'll keep um, marinating on this whole thing of how we want maybe that to be set up for long-term, you know, kind of use, keeping track of everything. So, thanks everybody. I appreciate you. All right, the next one on here says Matt G and JWF. So Matt and Justin, GitHub templates galore. So I will let you all take that away. Can you allow me to share my screen? Just stop your sharing. I will be happy to. There you go. All right. So here I made a this is about using the dot github and I think we just had some questions on this so here's I just made a, a test org for me and this is as Don has shown us last time with VMware remember how there's the readme that can be created that shows at the org level so that's what this can be to be fair I showed that in the common working group not in this meeting oh, oh was it in the common working group okay sorry <coughs> So Don had showed in the common work <laughs> the, the ability to kind of have a, a readme that displays at the top of your org that provides some more than just a picture, perhaps, but you know, ways to connect with the project. And so that was uh, relatively easy to do. Um, so what I did was I created a dot GitHub and then I created an initial repo that was created prior to the dot GitHub repo and a secondary repo that was created after the .github repo, because I wanted to see the effect of creating the .github repo, you know, kind of going both of these directions. So um, the .github repo is structured like this. So it has these kind of high level files here, code of conduct, contributing and readme. It has a profile folder, which is where this you can see that that org level readme is taken up from. So we just would create a profile folder within there. That's easy enough to do. Um, and then it also contained another GitHub folder that contains some issue templates and some pull request templates, because I wanted to see if those would cascade through as well to the other repositories. Um, and the answer is, is it went to everything. So it went to, it went to the repositories that were created um, prior to the repository that was created prior, and it went to the repository that was created after the .github repo. And what this looks like in the initial repo, one of them didn't carry through, but here is the code of conduct over here. 
right? So it doesn't show up in this list here. And this readme is the readme that I put in the initial repo, all right? And that stays there. So that's that's overridden. But the code of conduct, if I click it, you can see that it goes to the .github repo. And again, for this repository, I had I just created it ahead of the .github repository because I was curious if this would show up. So it, a few outstanding questions for me is I had also put a contributing in there. So unless I spelled it wrong, that didn't seem to go to the other repositories. I don't know why I was told that it would, but it didn't. So that was a little unclear to me. Um, and then here's the secondary repo. And again, you can see the code of conduct also went through to that. I wonder if it needs to be in a special folder. It might, kind of the way that All right, I had Justin, to Justin has his hand up. I just knocked over him. Oh, okay. I think to that end, I think it just has to go in the .github folder, and then it should get picked up. You might be able to do the same with code of conduct. Um, well, but code I'm of just thinking. Get, oh, it did get picked up, but. Okay, so yeah, maybe, maybe then, maybe contributing just has to be special, but. I was thinking okay. maybe just okay. context to here. I, I don't know how if folks had prior context to this, but in the in the DEI working group, we were recently playing around with issue templates as a way to try to streamline some of our how we collect metrics um, and other feedback on our GitHub repositories as we were going through and doing this triage and trying to clean things up. And it was from that discussion that we started thinking about well, like are there ways that we could you know have these templates be useful for other working groups and other teams in, in chaos. Like you'll see there's this new metric template. If you look at the link um, I just put in the chat, you'll see the issue templates that we, we tried out um, and for the DEI working group. So it'd be possible that we could try to standardize on some of these for maybe chaos wide for every working group to have a new metric template. Like the one that I put together for the DEI working group was inspired by the metric template. And if you see it, I think Matt will probably show. Yeah, you have all these like kind of prompts and questions um, and something else that's kind of come up since we talked about this that we could also look at is um, GitHub is trialing out this new issue forms feature, which is actually like, like a Google doc or Google form, but in GitHub issue form, which I thought was kind of cool. Um, so this could be one way that we try to better standardize for all the working groups to make it easier to review and for anyone in the community, whether it's from, you know, I think it's a total new contributor or someone who's coming from another working group, just that there's a more standard workflow across the working groups. Um, and of course, things like code of conduct and contributing guidelines, we could also try to standardize those across chaos and then just have them get picked up by all the other working groups. So that way it's not as much of an onus on each working group to make sure that their information on, on those kinds of things is up to date. It'd be easier to manage it centrally from the chaos wide community. Um, so I think it'd be something that both reduces some of the, the maintenance labor for all the working groups for having things like code of conduct, contribution guidelines, um, even issue templates, uh, but also um, would give us a chance to try to better organize workflows for how we like, try to make it easier to manage the GitHub working groups. Um, and, and the issue trackers that are there. So we were trialing this out, this idea out in the DEI working group and just wanted to share it back here to see um, if having the .github repo at the chaos org level would be helpful as a way to try to standardize this, maybe try to drive some conversations around, around how people can propose metrics. Um, so that was just some of the background and context for where this is coming from and, and why we were experimenting with this. I hope that helps. Uh, so I, I would like to point out that the, uh, the community repo serves this function currently in the project. Uh, if we were to move to the .github repo, uh, maybe there would be some way we could just merge those two together or change the name of the community repo to the .github repo. That way there's not uh, redundancy. Uh, but, but currently the uh, the community repo serves the function that that you've just described, Justin, or or we're we've been trying to get it to serve that function. So. I would sense. just add that um, the community repo also does uh, keep things like um, feedback on ChaosCon, 
and other things besides just template stuff. So my personal feeling would be to move whatever is um, like more templatey things to the get dot GitHub repo and keep the community repo as a place where people can just open issues if they have something, you know, community culture, for instance, or like we said, uh, chaos con feedback, that kind of stuff is those kind of conversations still do happen in the community repo. So I would, uh, I cautioned this in the last community meeting, and I, I suppose I, I'll, I'll say it again, uh, having too many platforms for communication or too many repos uh, kind of creates a lack of transparency. Uh, or it, it reduces transparency. So when, when we have to start looking around to see where everything's happening. So I would just, I'm, I'm not saying, I'm not saying I disagree with you. I'm just saying we, when we introduce new communication technology, when we create new repos, I think we really need to be careful about, uh, limiting the number of places that people have to look, look to, to see what's going on. No, I totally get that. Um, I think too, like some of the issues in the community repo are kind of placeholders so that information doesn't get lost and, and is more transparent. For instance, like the feedback on ChaosCon. So we had that those conversations here in these meetings and whatnot, but like that issue keeps it top of mind. So I wouldn't, like if I'm coming to a new org, I wouldn't necessarily be going to a .github repo to find out about the community or like, open something that I thought was, you know, a question or an issue about community. So that would be my only thing is, I think they do serve two separate purposes, but like, um, and Matt also just commented, we have like GSOC things in the community repo, but would those fit in a .github repo? I don't, I don't know. Like, I wouldn't think so, but maybe. Is the, is the purpose of the .github repo just to have that shared readme? Uh, well, I mean, it's not just the readme. It could be the contributing file. It could be the code of conduct. It could be, as I have up here, like issue templates and pull request templates. It can contain a lot of those things. It's just a, a hard coded meta repo for everything GitHub. So anything that's configured on the GitHub org, it's like a like more like a configuration repo than it is anything else. So do we, uh, so, so currently the, the way we use the, the community repo is we, we create the templates and the contributing document, the mission statement, those documents in the community repo, and then we just point to them. That way there's not uh, duplication or replication of documents in all of the other repos. Uh, so the, from what I'm understanding, the, the benefit of the, the .github repo is that we can create one contributing document in .github, and then it would automatically populate that document into all of the repos that are in the, the group. Is that correct? That's correct. Go ahead, Justin. And maybe one thing too, that using that organizational readme on the point of um, trying to reduce confusion on where to look and which repositories are for what. I think that organizational profile readme could be a really great way of trying to reduce that complexity of saying, hey, are you looking for working groups? Boom, here's all the working group repos. Hey, are you looking for something else? Here's a community place for community or GSOC. Um, so maybe we could try to avoid that, um, that rabbit hole of having too many places for too many things and just trying to use that, that profile read me as a way to basically annotate uh, where to find which things. And that might reduce some of the confusion there too, over. Just one last thing here. So on the, if I go to the GitHub repo in the, the secondary.github, the, the issue templates and the pull request templates could be created as well. So I think Justin, you had talked about this. And so this also cascaded through on both the initial one and the secondary one. So there's the template that comes from the GitHub repo. And just trust me, the PRs are the same thing. 
So that's it. Sounds cool. Um, how do we want to go forward? Is this something for the common working group to kind of take and run with or? My one, th my one thought um, that maybe I, that we should maybe think about was that we have a lot of different repositories in the chaos org. And I don't know that they all necessarily function the same way. So like all issue templates, like th those would actually go to all <laughs> repositories and we may not want that or a pull request form. And it, it's okay. I mean, we can, you can have the templates and then you can always just open up a blank issue. So we may want to communicate this a little bit more. So, okay, individual override, they can override it. Okay. Gotcha. I, uh, I think, it, I think the, the organization, I think we're all kind of in agreement that the organizational readme is, we should just do that. So I, I would vote, let's move forward with the organizational readme and the, the rest of the functionality in that dot GitHub repo, maybe we continue to discuss and, and look at. That would be my vote anyway. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm happy to keep talking through it. I, I think I was pretty I was pretty happy with the way it worked, at least just the way that it worked with existing repositories as well. Um, yeah, code of conduct. There are a couple that would be pretty easy. So they they don't show up in the main like folder structure. You have to look to the right side of the. You know, I don't know if you noticed that. Like, yeah, I have to look a little bit to the side, but. Maybe that's an, not an issue. Actually, that might actually be a positive. Uh, it would get stuff out. OK, that's it. Awesome, thank you. Um, that was really the only, that was the last item on the new stuff. Uh, so we can go back to, wait a minute, let me share again. Okay, so just a few reminders from last week. Um, GSOC, uh, we have applied and the list is of ideas is here. So if you have an idea for something, you can fork this and um, submit a PR to add an idea to this list. Um, and the old list I think is somewhere here, GSOC ideas 2021. So if you wanna see what previous ideas were, you can do that here. Uh, okay. Any questions on that? Something to add? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, um, the next item, very, um, very important. Uh, we are doing a photo mural. So if you are a chaotic, which you all are because you're here or you're watching this and so you are connected to us, whether you wanna be or not, you are. So you should absolutely join in and um, you can see there's a link here in the minutes to what we're looking for as far as like file format, where to send them, all of that stuff. So click that link. If you have any questions at all on that, please reach out to me, Elizabeth at chaos.community or you can hit me up on Slack. I'm also on Twitter and Facebook. I'm everywhere. It's like 20 times, 20 ways to get a hold of me. So um, good and bad, but <laughs> yeah, just hit me up. Be happy to answer any questions you have. Um, and I wanted to give some time, Matt, I'm sorry we don't have a ton of time left, but I did wanna get some time to, for you to talk about this DEI project badging because it sounds like yeah. this is an awesome thing. So let's talk about well, that. This is really preliminary. So obviously we have the Chaos uh, DEI event badging program that has been running really, really well for the last year. And we've all often talked about uh, project badging at the project level, but it's always, we always seem to get stuck on kind of a scale issue. Like if we just say, hey, project badging is open, there's the potential for just an overwhelming number of projects to request badges, um, not to mention the need to recertify or rebadge a project within some given period of time. So it just, it, it really, it's a really, 
<laughs> not bad, but complicated scale problem that we just can't overcome. And we don't have an unlimited supply of reviewers. So part of me was thinking, you know, we've talked a lot about these different programs, such as All In. We've talked, there's a group called Code for Society, obviously the Outreachy program that are looking to um, include projects that uh, individuals can apply to participate in, right? Um, or an all in is, is from a maintainer perspective, um, you know, code for societies from a, a scientific organization or scientific project perspective. So each, each different kind of of those boxes down at the bottom, it's kind of a different, um, a, a different uh, program. And so what I was thinking was with with chaos, perhaps we could start thinking about programs that we would like to participate with. So if I just stick with all in, for example, as projects or maintainers would like to join the all in program, they have to go through a project, the chaos project badging program as part of joining all in. I don't know if this is acceptable with the folks at all in. This is just me thinking aloud. Or if if projects would like to join code for society, they have to go through part of that process is the chaos DEI project badging program. So it, it immediately reduces the number of projects that can go through the badging program. Um, and it connects the badging programs with kind of established programs already out there uh, that may benefit from this. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, so that, those are my thoughts. Total silence. I think that's awesome because then we don't have to worry about the throttle of the influx. Like it seems like the partner program would worry about that. Yeah, and I mean, it could be something that we say, if you wanna participate or have the DEI project badging as part of your, you know, having people join the all-in project or having projects join Code for Society, for example, we the one resource that that we may ask or the, the one thing that we may ask is is to have reviewers help in this process like can you help us kind of you know um have this project or have this program this meaning the dei project badging program be sustainable and one of the things that we need is is reviewers in that situation so there are things that we could possibly ask for um, not just people but maybe even resources as well I dig it. It solves a lot of the issues that we were kind of coming up against when we were thinking about this and how we would scale it. I think, I think it's awesome. Mm -hmm. And the other cool thing is that perhaps even like for things like outreachy, like it's a, it's a yearly thing. So the recertification may become less of an issue for us like defining what that recertification is. Again, the partner project could really just define that. Would, would you say that the partner project could also define what metrics they want included? Or would that sure. be a standard set? Well, we, we could go, I mean, we might say that you have to re, a, achieve a gold badge, whatever, kind of like the event badging program. Yeah, I was thinking more like, um, so like all in for maintainers, they might be focused on one aspect of community health and might not be as concerned with others, uh, you know, fair. versus yeah. like code for security. They might have different, like, is that something that, I mean, I, obviously we don't, we don't know, yeah. but just. Yep. It's completely fair. I think it's awesome. So just something to think about. All right. Any comments? I see a few um, plus ones. Love the idea. Thank in you. Chat. Anybody have thoughts on this? We have two minutes. Nothing. Everyone's tired. I'm okay, I'm okay with that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I love silence, actually. Silence is great. Guys, my kids crazy. Like they always have to have noise. I'm like, no, I just want to quiet. Less noise is better. <laughs> That's <Sit>. right. <laughs> That's right. Okay, I'll stop sharing. Uh, I think we can call it. Uh, thanks so much to everyone for coming, especially our newcomers, Nanso, Melba, Enoch, 
Ayush, great to see you all. Thank you for joining us. And we will see everybody next week. Go Bengals. Cheer us. Keep cheering. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Thank you.